All right, how much damage can you output if you really min-max this for the end game? You can see a tick over here for 25 mil. Now keep in mind, the target's gotta hold still, you gotta hold still, you need these buffs up in order for you to deal these crazy amounts of numbers. And keep in mind, these ticks are every half a second, so to get the number on DPS, it'd be basically doubled here. And you have another few other proxy over here, but I'm not gonna even count those. But these conditions need to be met, and the damage realistically is not that bad. All right, Diablo 4 Sorks, let's go ahead and hop into the Incinerate endgame build, starting off with Sigil 100 gameplay, and then we'll move on to open world content as well as the pit. So for starters, let me go and go over like why you'd want to play this build and essentially what has changed. So one of the brand new aspects that we get is the flamethrowers. This allows the Incinerate to actually shoot out triple beams instead of just one. And it does say that it deals like less amount percent of normal damage. Now, if you put this on your amulet, you can actually increase this amount by 50%. So you'll actually get increased damage versus like the lower under 100% number, depending on your roll, obviously. But uh, this is essentially what makes the build a lot stronger and it has a lot more clear speed and they have been buffing incinerate several times. Now, another thing that is quite nice is you can roll greater affix on Flame Scar, which is your plus ranks to incinerate. I don't happen to have a perfect one with all the master working done, but if you do happen to max it out, got a Harlequin Crest, uh, you can get incinerate up to crazy, and I mean actually crazy amounts of damage. The intro clip where we were tagging for like 19 mils, that's not even anywhere close to the max because you can get maxed out at 33 ranks you could probably push to crazy, crazy amounts of numbers if you happen to get the correct rolls on the master working. I mean, there's very few skills that will show you 871 X damage. It's just absolutely crazy. Uh, and you also get a bunch of damage reduction uh, with this if you happen to actually run one of these nodes on the skill tree, which we will definitely get. I want to also start off the video by mentioning that this build is not going to be for everyone as it does do an incredible amount of damage, when you meet the conditions. Those conditions are you holding still, the enemy holding still, and it has to kind of ramp up in damage. You also need to have a firewall kind of active. Uh, you don't have to manually cast a firewall, but it is on a lucky hit chance. So uh, if those conditions are met and the enemy is CC'd, you can hit for, again, crazy amounts of damage. Now, in realistic use though, uh, a lot of times the boss may summon something that will, like, you know, activate a CC and you need to jump or teleport out of the way, and that is going to lower your DPS because you're not just dealing damage. And in general, with melee in this game and like there's abilities that make it so you can't activate any skills or it'll fear you, freeze you, uh, grab you, there's so many things that move your character away and how Incinerate works is it has to ramp up and deal more damage while you are channeling it, uh, as well as with like intercom and stuff. So if you really want to min-max in DPS, in realistic scenarios, it is quite difficult to actually get crazy amounts of damage consistently. It's not like you're just going to walk up to things and just hit them for billions of damage like the Necromancer. So most people will probably enjoy the Frozen Orb Sorceress a lot more, which I will link down below, but this build does definitely have its uses in terms of just having fun and spinning around like a helicopter. While it is fun, you don't want to be doing that on the bosses because you want to try to min-max your DPS. You can see there's a couple, there's like five mils over here, and it's just because you have to meet all these conditions in order for you to get that damage to ramp up, and those conditions need to obviously be met. So uh, I will link the Frozen Orb Sorceress build down below, but let's go and show off kind of like where it would actually be kind of like good so you could spin around like a helicopter in fact this little mechanic over here where you're supposed to stand in a circle uh, and you could spin around like a helicopter which we will do in just a moment over here i'll show you guys what that looks like yeah so this is one of the mechanics where you're supposed to stand in here and i could spin around you get insane amounts of damage reduction while you are using incinerate and this is where the build becomes good so even though originally when i made this build it was kind of more for memes to kind of spin around like a helicopter it actually does crazy amounts of damage Granted, you have to be holding still, the enemy needs to be sitting there for enough time for the damage to ramp up, and enemies move in the game, unless they are frozen, which you want to play frozen orb, or if you roll on the tempering chance to freeze, well, that does help out quite a bit, and you can deal even more damage when you actually freeze the enemy. So now that I got kind of the introduction out of the way, because I did kind of want to almost give you guys a warning with this build, that it is definitely a different playstyle, because your character needs to hold still, which, you know, it's it sounds bad in action RPG, and it's not. Uh, that bad because you do get an insane amount of damage reduction, but again any fears slows like those things do get kind of annoying uh, With this build because you're just gonna be hit by a lot of things So I built it to be as tanky as possible and honestly it is quite tanky uh, compared to other uh, builds But you're gonna be absorbing most of the damage uh, via your ice armor. So for starters uh, Let's go ahead and go over the skills and when we would use them So pretty much ice blades you activate it just to proctile rashes and then you can forget about it You don't really need it for the vulnerability, but it does technically work 
incinerate, you use this to deal your damage. You just activate it and start spinning around. And then uh, with flame shield, this is just for survivability. Same thing with ice armor. And we're going to be actually getting more damage with ice armor with season four. There's an update to ice armor, which gives us more damage. And then firewall, you don't really need to manually cast, but you can if you want to. Then we run teleport for mobility. Firewall for the enchantment, because it does give us an X25 multiplicative damage on burn targets. And then we're also running Ice Armor. So Ice Armor is going to make it so we have a small chance of applying Ice Armor when we get hit. Then as far as the um, aspects go, let's go over the aspects and then I'll go over kind of like the important uh, kind of roles. You don't have to get every single one of these roles, but it's kind of ideal. So Ever Living is great. Uh, Juggernaut is great. Uh, these are all for kind of for survivability. Intercom, because you're going to be holding still. Then Crowded Sage, it's really great uh, for survivability. I really like this one, but you can run whatever defensive one that you want to. And then Concussive Strikes also makes it so when you have uh, a dazed enemy, you do more damage. And dazing is kind of like a, another method of crowd control because it's kind of a different way of stun, so to speak. So they're not going to be able to deal damage to you. And then for your weapon, you want Flame Scar and you want the Greater Affix on Incinerate. Again, I don't have like a perfectly rolled one, but you can get crazy amounts of damage. That's how you get the 871x damage. Uh, if this gets perfect uh, on the uh, Greater Affix, and this is a pretty easy item to go ahead and trade for. Like most people probably don't want to play Flame Scar uh, as far as like in Diablo in general. Obviously, if you're playing Incinerate, uh, you can use it, but most people will transition out of Incinerate. Like a lot of people will play it because it's kind of like the season starter build, but there are people that want to go play it in the end game so uh it isn't really super expensive right now fractured winter glass is a lot more expensive if you want to get perfect rolls or greater affix because that's kind of the flavor of the month here for the sork but uh, yeah really good stuff indeed and don't worry about the tempers it doesn't matter i copied partially of this build over from uh, another build uh, just so i didn't have to reduce some of the uh, paragon glyphs but everything has been updated here uh, but don't worry on the uh tempers because you can't temper the unique item so as far as uh flamethrowers aspect over here you do want this in your amulet that's going to make it so the beam will spit into triple and then uh, engulfing flames over here so more damage and then we run talrosh's iridescent loop for even more damage and then you want the aspect of configuration uh because it's more damage here and then on top of that it has like a little like burn pop that will happen and this is what you kind of want to look for on pieces of gear so the important tempers and or mods here uh, or affixes so ideally you want some sort of source of mana per second ideally in your helmet your uh chest piece as well as in your boots you can get mana per second that is important because you do want to be able to get as much damage as possible and on the skill tree there is bonus damage once you are above 50 percent but that's pretty easy to go ahead and achieve uh, because you don't really need to get that much mana in this build because mana recovery in this build is totally totally fine but uh, the important things to also get is on your ring, you can either get a Cursed Touch or you can get Lucky Hit Chance to make enemies vulnerable uh, as a mod. You do not want attack speed and you do not want crit because it is a damage over time build and these channel damage over time builds will not require you to actually scale those. Even though Flame Scar shoots out these little embers that do damage, it doesn't matter. Even if you crit with it, they tickle uh, at the end game. In the open world content level 100, you know, Hell Tides, even though I've increased the monster level of the hell tides uh you do not get like an insane amount of damage with the embers that kind of shoot out they essentially act as like another source of, i guess you get damage out of it but uh, it's not really that big of a deal uh and then again uh in your gloves where normally you'd want attack speed and crit you don't need it with this build but you do want intelligence and the reason why you want intelligence is it will scale your damage here and then as far as in our gems uh we are actually running emerald and if you're wondering why do we want crit strike damage when we don't crit so the reason why is in the Paragon, there is a node that I will show you that gives you more damage based on your crit strike damage. Now that is important uh, because that will give you uh, more damage here uh, against, well, it's technically supposed to be for uh, uh, enemies that you crit, but even though you don't crit with it, it's still part of your crit strike damage, which still gives you your multiplier. Uh, but if you really want to, you can run Amethyst. It's not a big deal. It's just something that a lot of people may just not even think about. But other than getting Int, it, there's not really any like really important stat here. Uh, if you can get Endless Pyre, that's cool. But Intelligence is kind of key on all your pieces of gear. If you can get a Greater Affix, which is very common, you get a lot more damage. But I'll get into that once we get into the Paragon. So as far as the skill tree goes, there's not really anything too special here. Or just max out Incinerate, get 30% less damage on top of 50 so it's 45% last damage taken. That's almost like three aspects right there. Really great stuff indeed. And then you get more damage once you're uh, at above 50% mana, or it's technically 50 mana, but 
Most people will not scale mana in this build, unlike, let's say, if you're playing Frozen Orb or Fireball, where you actually want to meet a threshold so you can get that guaranteed crit. You don't need it for this. So yeah, that's good stuff over there. And then uh, just some extra defensive stats is kind of like bread and butter for Sorcerers to get the Shimmering. You get the uh, uh, Shimmering Teleport as well over here. And then over here, we get the Mystical Ice Armor. That's where it's a little bit different. So uh, when we freeze enemies, and on the Tempers, uh, if you want to, you can get a bunch of like chance to freeze enemies on the Utility because the Utility for this build is totally fine. It's not like it's like a, there's an important stat to get. So if you freeze the enemies, you can just get more damage here and Ice Armor will automatically activate. So it'll per periodically... Uh, chill and freeze enemies you'll see in the gameplay that there's going to be lots of times where the enemies are frozen and sometimes people ask me how am i freezing enemies there and it's just because the frost armor and there is just a lucky hit chance to go ahead and freeze and again you'll you'll see it if you pay attention to the gameplay when the enemies are like blue that's when they are frozen and that uh, will just deal extra damage pretty much when the ice armor is up but it'll also automatically activate which is quite nice so we get more damage uh, and uh, more survivability because if they're chilled they're kind of moving slower so we're not getting hit as often uh, but over here, we're getting increased lucky hit chance to activate the firewall. Just one point into ice blades. That's totally fine. And then uh, we have a bunch of stuff just for survivability. So whenever we use a cooldown, we're just going to get extra survivability. And then uh, over here, we get inner flames. Uh, this one, it says you deal, not uh, you gain crit strike damage. So uh, this is a little bit different, I believe, than the other one. But if it does somehow work, because keep in mind, Diablo, there's always new bugs and things not working in the game and new things are being discovered. As far as I'm aware of, it does say that you deal X increased crit strike damage, even though we want crit damage because there's something on the Paragon board. But if you deal, I'm not sure if it actually works uh, properly. So if you want to put points into it, that's going to be something I'm going to consider untested. But uh, anyways, Crippling Flames, you can immobilize enemies, that's fine. And for Firewall, you just want to get Enhanced Firewall, so enemies inside the Firewall will take increased damage over here. And then uh, for the other Fire ones, Fiery Surge, you have to put that in because we do want to get Soul Fire, so things cost less and deal more damage. And then this Pyre... When we deal burning damage, it's going to go ahead and ramp up and deal even more damage. And then warmth over here just for extra survivability so we get to actually regen. So uh, really nice stuff over here to just get some extra heals. And then we also have combustion, which makes it so our burning effects deal more damage. And we get an additional 2% per unique source of burning that if we plot on the enemy. If we really want to push this further, we could throw in the uh, enchantment for the... Firebolt, and then we can activate all these skills, and then we can get extra damage uh, with this to actually activate for all the unique sources of different things applying burn, but it does kind of become tedious for the gameplay, and I think this is much more of a chill build than that. If you do want to play that and get more damage, by all means, go for it. As far as the Paragon board, let's go ahead and hop, hop right into that. So, for starters, we want lots of non-physical damage, so we can get the maximum amount of bonus to fire, as, as well as the cold damage for the Paragon note. So, first board, uh, Obviously, it's a starter board, so then we get Elementalist. Then we get uh, Unleash. There's a lot of non-physical damage over here. And we get this for Mana Regen as well as a Multiplier. Then we get Burning Instinct. So remember how before I was saying Crit Strike Damage was kind of important? So Crit Strike Damage over here uh, is going to give us more damage. Now, you don't have to really try to get it. You'll just, maybe you have a piece of gear that rolls it. It's fine. It's not the end of the world if it rolls it. And it's not even that bad. But X Multiplicative Damage is always better than Additive. That's why uh, instead of Amethyst, I decided to go with the uh, Emerald but you also get ex extremely huge amounts of damage when you get the uh, greater affix plus two uh, intelligence so for every 25 int we get one x multiplicative damage which you can get a crazy amount of damage and that's kind of how you get those big numbers and then over here there is pyromaniac so we get more damage when we uh, channel incinerate it kind of ramps up there's so many things that again they have to ramp up to get good damage so if you don't see good damage with your build make sure that you are holding still you don't want to Attack, move, attack, move. That's more in the Frozen Orb or pretty much most of the builds in Diablo. But uh, this one, you do have to hold still. The damage has to ramp up. And then over here and the next board, because we go from three to four, the order does matter uh, over here. Uh, and then we're going to get Frigid Fate and we're going to get Tactician over here. So there's going to be some extra uh, damage on this one over here, which is going to make it so we do more damage after we use a defensive skill. And it's really easy because, well, we happen to have three of them. And then it technically can last longer for each defensive skill not on the action bar. So the only one we don't play is Frost Nova. That's another reason why I don't like playing Frost Nova. But it's, it's definitely not a bad option if you really want to play it because you just activate it and then it'll still continue. So even though you think, oh, I get less of the duration, true, but you can just activate it and get another four seconds anyway. So it's not really that much of a downside. 
And then we get around to Frigid Fate over here. This is why you need to get uh, non-physical damage. You don't need to roll cold damage on any piece of gear, but non-physical will count as cold and you'll get the X30. In fact, if you copy this board exactly, you will meet a lot of the uh, bonus thresholds for the numbers. And then we are running Searing Heat over here uh, with Exploit. And then we are running Elemental Summoner uh, with the uh, node of the Flame Feeder. So uh, we have six uh, boards over here. And then in terms of the other things that you could run instead of other things in the game, if you happen to have Ring of the Star of the Skies or if you happen to get, let's say, the Harlequin Crest, are those good? Absolutely. Definitely run those. Uh, but there's not really anything else that I really would not recommend for this build guide. But there it is. There's the Incinerate build. And I may do an updated uh, build guide for this later down the line as I really want to see how hard we can push with this build in terms of min-maxing. Again, 33 ranks is quite difficult to get. But realistically, uh, as far as pit goes, I didn't even show off some pit gameplay. But uh, over here, here's some pit gameplay. Of, uh, it's, it's this is what monster level 152. I don't expect most builds in Diablo in general to be able to clear the max level 200 pit. Uh, but as far as it goes, Necromancer is probably their primary like boss killer, so to speak. And uh, Blizzard is really good with uh, killing bosses as well. I would say for the sorceress, it's just one area where the sorceress is just not nearly as competitive. Let's say like the uh, Thorns Barb that can kill some of the bosses in one second. So if you wanted to build the like one second one shot bosses, maybe check out my Rogue build that will allow you to do that. But that's another like super end game build um, that uh, will be absolutely crazy. There's also the other brand new Rogue build which we'll be dropping a guide on very soon, which is going to be the heart seeker build because there is some other bug honestly with diablo at the day there are so many bugs with this game and that's kind of like the best builds in the game they're always bugged but this build it's a pretty consistent solid build if you do want to go ahead and run it even for end game but again you do have to be holding still and you can see the gameplay over here i'm just kind of sitting there holding still and uh, as you climb higher into the pit it does become quite dangerous for a lot of builds specifically if you've ever played the druid to hold still but this build can hold still a lot better because again you get an insane amount of damage reduction with this build. I mean, it's 45% damage reduction. You can find that if you happen to get uber unique with materials, you can get crazy amounts of damage reduction in the game. But anyways, there's the incinerate build. If you guys felt like there's anything that I missed out on or other like theory crafts, let me know down below in the comment section below. And I'll update it when I do like my far, far end game build with hopefully what we can get with the huge amount of bonuses with flame scar with the plus 33 ranks, man. I mean, that that's crazy amounts of numbers. I can't wait to see if someone actually does build that. But I do want to build, like, the Teleport Sork, and I want to do Ball Lightning. So a lot more Sork builds coming very soon on the channel. But if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit subscribe to the bell if you want to see more Sork builds, as well as all the uh, other build guides for this season. We're going to be cooking up a lot of cool and unique builds. But anyways, peace out, guys. And check the pin. You'll have the build planner down below.